Amen. 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 I thank God today. Um, really, really want to, to share some things. I've been flowing in some, uh, w- diving into some things out of the prophets that I sense the Lord wants to take us into. Um, and even as we begin to embody um, the uh, embody the nature of an apostolic church is understanding the importance of having apostolic emphasis. Amen. And, and one of the ways that you begin to, uh, there's certain things that as an apostolic church that we need to emphasize and that the people of that church who are also carrying an apostolic dimension within them, an apostolic peace within them, need to understand and um, understand that emphasis as well. Um, you know, if you study the, the epistles, there was one major emphasis that the apostles had and that speaks to us about an apostolic church, and it was an emphasis of being spiritual. Um, an apostolic church is not a carnal church. It's not a carnal church. There's not constant envying and divisions and strifes and witness and whisperings and murmurings in that church. Amen. Um, because but the apostolic understands that the power of God can't flow in that. It don't matter what name we do it in. If we do it, it's carnal. Amen. And so now what we must understand is, is we have to, as an apostolic church, understand what it means to be spiritual, not just spirited. Amen. Because new age folks are spirited. Amen. Folks who do crystals and folks who do the third eye and Illuminati, they're spirited. They, they get spiritual inspiration. Amen. But we must understand Holy Spirit. And then we must understand the spiritual nature of the flesh. It's not that the flesh isn't spiritual, it's spirited. It's, 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 it's a spirited expression of a believer. And so one thing an apostolic church is, is a church that deals with flesh and carnality, that comes out of flesh and carnality and walks in the spirit of the living God. But if if there's one thing you can't mistake when you come into an apostolic church is you can't mistake the fact that the spirit of God is here. The spirit of God is moving because an apostolic church, amen, calls men out of flesh. Amen. Who have bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth before whom Christ was evidently crucified before you. This persuasion did not come of those who raised you up. But men who crept in who are carnal and fleshly. And taught you about traditions and ways of approaching God that actually flow out of flesh. Amen. Paul dedicated Romans 7. Romans 8. Romans 9, Romans 10, and Romans 11, all to dealing with the flesh. Galatians 3 and Galatians 4 and Galatians 5, all to dealing with the flesh. Because it's obvious that it was an apostolic church. And uh, for 1 Corinthians, my God, in Corinthians 2, he always made sure he dealt with flesh. Because it's difficult for believers to recognize the difference between flesh and spirit. Amen. Amen. And so, man, it takes now apostolic teaching to help set the course, pull men out of flesh and in the spirit. Come on, we're called to walk in the spirit. Somebody say walk in the spirit. We're not called to have spiritual encounters. We're not just called to have spiritual dreams. We're not just called to have spiritual visions. We're not just called to have spiritual times with God. We're called to walk. Live, do life out of the spirit. We cannot replace spiritual experiences with walking in the spirit of God. Those are two different things because you don't need to be a son to have spiritual experiences. Amen. And so I'm going to take you to a very unusual text to talk about and, and call us into an apostolic spiritual posture. I'm going to go back to Ezekiel. And it may seem out of place, but it'll make sense in a minute. 
Glory to the living God. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading at verse number one. We didn't get past verse number one last week. I'm going to read a little bit further this week. Understanding vision, watching, seeing. Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Says, now it came to pass, and I'm going to read um, extensively to a degree. Uh, so let's just flow with it. Now it came to pass in the 30th year. In the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year king of, of, of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, verse number five, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And I want you to pay attention and track the likeness of the four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had first and foremost the likeness of a man. Everybody say they were like man first. They were first and foremost had the likeness of a man because it's pointing to something. Verse number six, and every one of them had four faces. Everybody say four. Everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on the four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. Everybody say straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, everybody say faces. They had had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they had four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Verse number 11. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went everyone straight. Everybody say straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go. That's the key. Whether the spirit was to go. They went. And they turned not when they went. They went where the spirit was going. Only where the spirit was going. Only how the spirit was going. They moved as the spirit moved. They moved with the spirit. If the spirit stopped, they stopped. If the spirit moved, they moved. If the spirit went left, they went left. If the spirit went right, they were right. Everybody say they were being led by the spirit. All right, verse number 20. Let me go there. Because I want, I want to emphasize this and I want to make a point. Because we're talking about a, a apostolic spiritual church. Amen. And we got to understand that he didn't start talking about uh, apostolic spiritual church when we got to the Roman epistle, well, the, the Pauline epistles. The whole volume of the book speaks of him. Amen. So verse number 20. Whether soever... I just want to reemphasize this. The spirit was to go. They went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them. I wish I could talk about creation and how it. Oh. I'm going to talk about that later. How it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because the wheels are creation. Uh. And the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Whether soever the spirit was to go. I want to talk about entering into a, a spiritual posture as an apostolic church. Father, we thank you. And we bless you right now for the power of your word to order, to set government, to make room and space for the power and the presence of God to do everything you want to do up in this place. We thank you and bless you right now that we prepare a place for you. That you may abide, walk, and be Emmanuel, God with us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah. 
I want to talk about flowing in the spirit. Well, hey, Miss Amber, how you doing? Hey, I'm glad you're able to make it this week. Them, some of my clients from Lake City. Hey, Amen. I'm glad that you're here. Um, I want to look back at Ezekiel 1 and 12 first. Uh, Ezekiel 1 and 12. I want to look back at that. It says, here's something about the living creatures. Because I want you to, I want to help you understand something from a prophetic perspective, we need to understand that this, these living creatures are pointing to. Amen. It says in verse number 12, I'm going to read it again, although I emphasized it in the introduction. And it's talking about these weird creatures. Ezekiel is this weird book. It starts out like it seems weird. All these weird symbols and all these, you know, you got beasts, you know, and you got with four wings and four faces and eyes. They got wheels by them in wheels with eyeballs all around it. And they're moving straight forward wherever they go. They never turn. How do you move straight without turning and um, um, so forth and so on? So you got all these weird symbols in here um, in this book, but it's pointing to a reality of spiritual life. Ezekiel 1 and 12 says, and they went everyone straight forward, whether the spirit was to go. That's the key verse, well, uh, the, the, the key phrase where the spirit was to go. Now, and if we look at Ezekiel 1 and 20, I'm going to read that again. It, it says, whether soever the spirit was to go, they went. This is what I need you to understand about Ezekiel's vision. Ezekiel's vision is prophetically important to us because it reveals to us the blessing and the nature of moving in the spirit. Of walking in the spirit. Of being led by the spirit. Of only going where the spirit is going. Come on. It's pointing to Romans 8.14. Uh, that's what it is. Ezekiel 1 now exemplifies what Romans 8 talked about. Romans 8 and 14. Those who are led. Come on. By the spirit of God. Follow me. They are indeed what? The sons of God. We're not sons of God based off of just confessing Christ. We're not sons of God based off of attending church. We're not sons of God based off of what our duty in church. We're sons of God based off of being led. Come on, it's what's leading us. If our emotions are leading us and God's spirit ain't, we're not sons. If our feelings are leading us, if our anger is leading us, if what's going on around us is leading us, those who are led by the spirit of God. God. It's what leads us that makes us sons. We need to understand that first and foremost. It's what leads us. It must be the spirit of God. So Romans 8, 8 and 14, literally, Ezekiel 1 is insight into Romans 8. Sons are sons based on how they're led and the four creatures who are first and foremost like a man. They're not first and foremost like an, uh, a lion. They're not first and foremost like an eagle or an ox. The first thing that they're first and foremost is like a man. And sons are sons because they're led by the Spirit. And the four creatures who are first and foremost in the likeness of men are completely led by the Spirit. Whether soever the Spirit went they went so Ezekiel 1 is a revelation of the sons of God come on follow me for a minute y'all don't mind if I just teach this Ezekiel 1 is a revelation of Romans 8 the creatures and the wheels point to the manifestation of the sons of God come on the earth is not waiting on another gift the earth is not waiting on another ministry the earth is waiting on a manifestation creation come on Romans 8 is waiting on a manifestation of the sons of God what I need y'all to understand up front is, is that God is about to release us into the tangible impact, power, and blessing of walking in the spirit revealed by Ezekiel 1. Come on. I, I need y'all to understand that, that we're going to learn how to guard the atmosphere. We, we're going to learn how not to let flesh in and operate. Amen. Spirit has to be guarded. A move of God has to be guarded because where there's a move of God, it always attracts the demonic. 
Anytime God starts moving, divination starts following and saying, these are sons of the most high God. Listen to them. Demons always start following, want to assist so they can attack. Divination is the python spirit. She was saying these were servants of the most high God by a spirit. Nobody told her that. She was spirited. She saw something. But it was the spirit of a python. It means python. That's a constrictor. Amen. Constrictors do what they do to cut off the wind. The spirit is like the wind. So anytime the wind starts blowing, constrictors start showing up. Amen. So we must understand the importance of protecting spirit. We're about to be released into a tangible impact, power, and blessing of the spirit. And I need you to know something about the spirit right away in Ezekiel chapter number one. The spirit is a vehicle. Everybody say vehicle. So why are you saying that, apostle? Because wheresoever the spirit was to go, everybody shout go. <laughs> the spirit is on the go. Go. The spirit of God is going somewhere. To be led by the spirit is to be going somewhere. And whatsoever the spirit of God went, they went to. Where it goes, I go to. If me and you really grab the hold of the spirit, then we must come to the conclusion we're on our way somewhere. We're going somewhere imperative. We're going somewhere important. We're going somewhere influential. We're going Going somewhere anointed because we can't be in the spirit without going whithersoever the spirit goes. Don't even tell your neighbor we're going somewhere. This is the key. This is the key. In order to be led by the spirit, we have to overcome the power of the flesh. Flesh doesn't have to defeat us. By defeating us, all it has to do is keep us in our flesh, and we can't win. Flesh just needs to keep us in flesh, and it'll always, the devil will always win. We don't see Ezekiel in one in most believers' lives because there's a lack of discernment between the spirit and the flesh. Huh? People who are in the spirit and people who are in the flesh do a lot of the same things. They just don't do them from the same source. And that's why it's so much confusion and we're accepting carnal things as spiritual acts. See, we live in a church age that believes if you come in the name of Jesus, you came in the spirit too. I, look here. There are people... For, uh, praying in his name, feeding in his name. They, they are pro prophesying, praying over folks in their name. And although it's in his name, they're in their flesh. Because we think if it's his name is on it, then his spirit got to be on it. You can't be saying Jesus unless you in. No, no, no. You can. Didn't he say that in Matthew 24? He said there are going to be many that say, lo, I'm here and lo, I'm there. But don't you dare believe them. They're saying that I am the Christ. Saying I am the Christ. That's the anointing. That's the spirit. Christ is not his last name. That's the spirit. Anointed one. Amen. Amen. And so we have to begin to have a level of discernment where we discern, yeah, you're saying what you're saying in his name, but you're still not in his spirit as you're saying it. You can quote scriptures in the flesh. Come on, you can stand on the word in your flesh. Amen. You can pray for folk in your flesh. Amen. To be in the flesh. So I got to break this down. If y'all don't mind me to teach. Because if we're not in our flesh, the house goes up every time we get together. If we're not in our flesh, somebody gets delivered every time we get together. If we're not in our flesh, healing breaks out every time we get together. If we're not in our flesh, demons aren't comfortable. Amen. To be in the flesh. 
is first and foremost to be unspiritual. I could teach for all, to be in the flesh. I want to jump back into the benefits and blessings of the spirit, but I feel the necessity to call us out of the flesh. Amen. Most people who are in their flesh are only in their flesh because they don't know they're in their flesh because they're doing everything they're doing in the name of Jesus. Amen. But the Bible says he that is in the flesh cannot do what? Please. That's Romans 8. In other words, flesh tries to please God. It isn't the people in the club. It isn't the people on drugs. They just ride out and sin. They're not trying to please God. Flesh is for believers in church who are not in the spirit, but still want to do the right thing. But they cannot please. To be in the flesh is to be unspiritual. It's when how we think what we see, how we feel, and how we see is not flowing from Holy Spirit as, as its source. It's when we're unspiritual doing spiritual things. Reading the word in our flesh, praying in our flesh, asking God for direction in our flesh. The reason why it's so difficult to discern and deal with the flesh is because the flesh does spiritual things while it itself is unspiritual. Watch this. James 3 and 15. I want to show you this. We're going to talk about the flesh. And I'm going to show it to you in NIV. Can we go? Yeah, we, we, it's talking about the wisdom of this world. It's talking about earthly wisdom. Amen. Which, which deals with decision making. Which deals with how we approach things. The wisdom of this world. Listen to what it says. And this is why God is so vehement about us coming out of the world. And he says, he says, the, such wisdom. Now watch this. Flesh is to be what? Unspiritual. Flesh is to be unspiritual. He says, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and lastly, what? Demonic. Notice that which is earthly is unspiritual and ultimately demonic. The flesh is the gateway to the demonic. That's how demons come in and occupy people through the flesh. I was sitting there talking to one of my, 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 one of my spiritual sons, and we were talking about the fact that how in the world do we cast out so many demons out of people? And those, demon, and, and those people talk about they feel better, they're doing better, they're, they're, do, they're coming to church for a while, but through the process of time, they end up having those same demons occupying them uh, 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 weeks later, sometimes months later. They never stay free. Why is it? That we've cast many demons out of folks and those demons are back in those people and those people are back outside of the church. Why is that happening? I suggest to you it's happening because we're casting out the devil but they're not crucifying their flesh. And everything that is carnal gives access to the demonic. In other words, see, I can cast the devil out. nobody crucify your flesh can't nobody make you lay down that nature that is not of God you have to do that yourself and so as long as I'm in the flesh I give permission for the demons that were thrown out of me to come back because the gate they come through is the gate called flesh unspiritual they, some people call it carnal some people call it the body of sin some people call it the sin nature some people call it earthly it all means the same thing, flesh. It don't matter how many demons we cast out of people. If they don't crucify those, their flesh, those demons will be right back. Amen? So, literally, as long as we're in the flesh, demons have permission to get in us. I'm going to say that again. As long as we're in the flesh, as long as the wisdom is first earthly, then it's what? Unspiritual. Then ultimately its source is what? The demonic. It opens us up to demonic oppression. Amen? Let me take flesh. 
just a little bit further. And, and, and I'm going to teach on that. But I want to say this even before I do. That's why it's so important to deny yourself. That's why it's so important to crucify your flesh. That's why it's so important to not forget there's a cross in Christianity. It's not just his cross. It's my cross. He didn't just say look at my cross. He said you take up your cross. You're going to have to mortify some stuff. You're going to have to kill some stuff. You're going to have to put some stuff to rest. You're going to have to say no to some stuff yourself and our problem is we're living under a liberal spirit in the church that calls lawlessness freedom and says doing everything I want to do is liberty when it's actually lawlessness and so now we have a church full of demon filled individuals that can't break out of bondage they come out for a while and come back oppressive bondages depression oppression addictions to sex in the church Why? Because you do whatever you want to. God ain't going to make you do nothing. You come to church when you want to. And you just got the demon cast out a week ago. And you're already missing church. Huh? Foolishness. But it's when, it's when we don't understand the difference between flesh and what? And all that flesh wants to do is keep you in your flesh so demons can occupy your life. He just lying so he can get access to you. And using the lips of anybody who is now ignorant enough to believe the lie. Amen. It don't matter if it's a pastor. It don't matter if it's a leader. I don't care if it's an archbishop. I don't care if it's an apostle. It, that's not true. It's not true. God don't ever make us do nothing we don't want to do when we won't, don't want to do it. That's a lie. Do you suffer when you want to? Do you get the amount of money you want when you want? Do you go to work when you want to go to work? Who set up that whole order? Was it God? <laughs> Foolishness that keeps men in their flesh. And opens them up for bondage. Amen. How many of you ever suffered voluntarily? Anybody? Come on, one. Well, how many of you have suffered? Well, who's the one who said it's by many tribulations? We enter into the, if you suffer with me, you shall. Who said that? Amen. Liberty ain't doing what you want to do when you want to do it. Amen? The fl I'm going to show you why people believe that. Because of the power of its demonic origin. It's spirited. You feel something when you hear that. And you have a rebellious bent anyway. Man, you felt a quickening. Hey! Satalia, Freedom! It's spirit. It's spirited. It just ain't the Holy Spirit. The flesh, watch this. The flesh is mindsets, reasoning, ways of approaching life that don't have the Spirit of God as their source. I'm going to say that again because we need to get it. The flesh is mindsets, reasoning, ways of approaching life that don't have... The spirit of God as they source. So by default, they come from the demonic, right? Wisdom that does not come from heaven is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. This is what I need you to get. In other words, flesh is mindsets that see things like demons see things, therefore becoming the doorway of demonic access. I'm going to say that again. Flesh is seeing things like demons see things, therefore becoming an access point for demons. We're all going to fall as believers. We just have to try our best. I'm going to say that again because we wouldn't preach that. We're all going to fall as believers. And then the one that's ready to fall again because they know they're going to call them after they leave tonight. Oh, shut up, come here. 
I've already planned my next fall, so I'm going to hear that preaching. There's some folks that already planned their next fall. You already know you're going back. You already know you're going to do it again. So I need somebody to preach to my flesh. Listen to me. We're all going to fall as believers. We just have to try our best. That is earthly. That is sensual. And that is demonic. That is a mindset that sees walking with God like demons walk, see walking with God. And demons see what it opens the door for a backsliding demon to occupy. In other words, it was, the backsliding demon would have never showed up if I didn't agree with the mindset that says we're going to fall anyway. So the only reason why I'm in a cycle of backsliding is because my flesh was the gateway for the demon that brings me into backsliding to come so after I cast that dirty devil out of you I need to help you understand you're going to have to change your mind we're all going to have times where we feel like giving up that is earthly that is sensual that is demonic now you open the door for a demon of hopelessness and wonder why you can't have hope in cycles every time during this year you miss them you can't stop crying you can't get over it you can't push past it I'm trying to get past it but I can't but we all have times when we feel like giving up is the demonic structure that opens the gate for the demon of hopelessness which comes in a game called depression oppression isolation, anger, short temper, not wanting to talk to nobody, not wanting to deal with nobody the Lord just led me not to talk to nobody, no it was a spirit that led you but it wasn't the Holy Ghost because there's a mental structure inside of you, there's a mind Mindset that God never sent your way uh, that's opening the gate to cause you to obey how you think. Somebody shout, I'm about to pull down some thought structures. I'm about to break free of this. I'm about to mortify my flesh. I'm about to come out of this carnality. I'm about to walk in the spirit of God where there's life and peace. There are times when we don't feel like praying. And there are times when we don't feel like praising God. I just kept what those times, well, I don't want to pray. I don't want to praise. And I don't want to hear no word. Don't preach to me. I'm tired of people to preaching to me. Well, my point is, he's chosen the foolishness of preaching. Because if you're going to get saved, it's going to be the preaching. It ain't going to be nobody hearing how you feel. You don't want to hear what's going to save you from even having that nasty attitude? We need salvation from old to hell. We need salvation from nasty attitudes. We need salvation from bipolar conditions. Were you happy on Monday? I can't get a smile on you by Wednesday. What happened? It's the flesh. And no matter how many times I get hands laid on me, no matter how many demons I get cast out of me, I just think my, I just think my, my situation is hopeless. Because we didn't preach, we didn't pray, but I still feel like this. But you ain't never tore down the thought structure that gives those demons permission to come back seven times worse every time. Now, the heaviness is worse than it's ever been. Now, the challenge is worse than it's ever been. Now, why is it so bad? Because I cast the demons out. But I, the house was clean. But I never put it in order. I never put my thoughts. I never had somebody come up to me and tell me, you need to change the way you look at relationships. God delivered you from that abusive relationship. And now you're saying, I'm praying for a man of God. Well, if thou beest a man of God, he's not going to sleep with you until he marries you. And so until your mind changes. 
you got a demonic thought structure that opens the door for demons of abuse to abuse you, crush you, walk over you, use you, call you only when they want you at night. God, I wish I could preach up in here. You're not being abused because the enemy is attacked. You're being abused because your thoughts set you up for demonic oppression. Your mind is messed up. It's earthly. Unspiritual. Which is demonic. There are times we just don't feel like praying. And there's times we just don't feel like preaching. And that opens the door for a demon of irreverence. So we literally come in church and sit like this. Unless you sing a song that excites me, I ain't standing up. And we actually think that's God leading us to stand up at a certain song when it's a demon of irreverence. It's a demon of irreverence trying to suffocate the wind that's blowing in the house. So that's why I need the people who know better to stand to your feet. I need the people that know better to lift up your hands. I need the people that know better to open your mouth. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If we're going to be in here, God going to be in here. If we're going to be in here, healing going to be up in here. If we're going to be up in here, the power of God will manifest in this place. Come on, I need about 15 folk that don't mind giving God some reverence. Send that demon and devil of a reverence back where it came from. I will bless the Lord at all times at his praise. Hey! I ain't waiting for, take me to the king. I ain't waiting for my favorite song. If you bless him, I'm going to bless him with you. If you magnify, I'm going to magnify him with you. Clap ye hands, oh ye people. That's a demon keeping you from honoring the only God that will be able to make you everything God called you to be. Oh, some demons are being moved right now. God, I feel it in this atmosphere. Glory, a fresh glory is hitting the house right now. Rebuke that demon and pull down that flesh. Take the nails and the hammer. This is a good time to put some stuff to death. Take the nails and the hammer and begin to mortify that spirit of irreverence in this place. Oh, hands, you will praise him. Oh, mouth, you will bless him. Oh, feet, you will dance to him. Come on, come on, young people. Run that demon off of you. That demon knows that as you lift him up, he lifts you up. Run that demon off of you. That demon knows he inhabits the praises. When you say thank you, he sits in that. Run that demon off. Come on, bless your God. He's worthy to be prayed. You don't let your feelings tell you it ain't time to praise God. You don't let your situation, your situation ain't your God. Ah, he'll have no other God before him. And if I ain't praising him before because of what I went through, I'm putting another God. I'm obeying another God. You know what that demon is after? He's after what's swirling in the room right now. You know what's swirling in the room right now? The wind of God. You know where the wind of God is? Revival comes. He was after this the whole time. You thought it was about your feelings. And the devil knows that if these folk keep on praising him, there's going to be a sound that's like a mighty rushing wind. There's going to be a glory that comes into that place. There's going to be a pouring of God's spirit. There's going to be a demonstration. 
He knows when you do it in your bedroom, same thing. When you do it going to work, same thing. When you do it in your cubicle, same thing. Shada yada rahaya. Hold on. I unlock the bellies of everything 18 and younger. I, the, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, uh, thou hast perfected praise. Uh, I unlock the bellies uh, of 18 and under, uh, even right here in this place right now. You feel that breaking in your spirit? That's why that demon was telling you to sit down. That's why that demon was trying to get you to be quiet. He wanted you to be irreverent. But the Bible says, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all, ain't nothing near God ain't blessed him. All you got to do is check the blueprint of heaven. The 24 elders, they ain't sitting there quiet. Them four-winged creatures, they ain't sitting there quiet. The choir, anything around the throne, the enemy wants to keep us from the throne. So no matter what's going on. We cast down, we crucify that flesh. Shana da ansiata. Shedan yada ansioto. Come on, y'all not on. You feel that waking you back up? That's why the demon was trying to suppress that. That's why he told you not to do that. Because you have a well in you that springs up. You waiting on life to come. And he's waiting on you to stir up a gift that has already been placed on the inside of you. There's something inside of you that can make it. There's something inside of you that can take it. There's something inside of you that can move forward. But it's activated by worship. Hey, yada bahan ya tan yada. Rede de rebe kon yada ba chiata. Ramon sondoro konsi. Rete tera ba chiata. Rondoro bo konsi. I command healing to hit bodies right now. Right now. Right in the midst of what the enemy tried to hijack and tried to stifle. I decree the power of God that heals. Touch every infirmity. Touch blood cells. Open up circulation. Break the grips of arthritis. Cancer bow your knee to the name of Jesus. We will bless his name. That's why an apostolic church protects the house and attacks flesh. Because an apostolic church understands this is all the time. This is how we do it. There was a song that said, this is how we, yeah, this is how we do it. I wake up the gifts in you. I activate every demon that's come to discredit your ability to operate in the grace, the gift, the destiny, the purpose of God. Every part of you that's brought condemnation to conceal the gift, that's brought depression to conceal the gift. You are not gifted. You are a gift. Come on, I need somebody in here to bless Come on, I'm not just gifted. I am a gift. 
Watch this. So let's take it a step further. Candida. Oh, now, 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 now look at this. Romans 8 and 6. Listen. Talk about an apostolic church being spiritual. Mortifying the works of the flesh. See, it's God that quickens your mortal body. We need to get that. It's God. Everybody say, it's God that quickens my mortal body by his spirit. I'm going to say that again. It's God that quickens my mortal body by his spirit. So he says, when I am weak, then I am strong. We think that's an excuse to be weak when that's to serve God until we're weak so he can quicken us and show us a strength beyond our own. See, many people never allow God to quicken their body because they're not willing to go beyond what they feel. But when you don't feel like praising them, that's the time too. Because then God quickens you. I'm not just clapping because I'm making myself clap. The Spirit of God is quickening me. See, there's times when it ain't just a clap, it's a quickening. There's times when it ain't just preaching, it's a quickening. Because you ain't feel like it. You've been through all type of stuff. The devil been hitting you high, low, and in between. You fighting stuff to the right. And you're fighting stuff to the left. And you still hear a voice from God saying, who shall go for me? And after fighting all that, you look back up at God. And you say, send me, I'll go. And when you go in the midst of all of that, God quickens your mortal body. And I'll pre I'm preaching and I'm preaching by quickening. Praise by quickening. When we do what we do with our body by spiritual quickening, it releases spiritual results. So the spirit begins to hit the house because you're not just doing it, but you're doing it by quickening. Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, just say we're apostolic and we walk in the spirit. Romans 8 verse 6. It goes on to say this. To be carnally minded, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. It says in the NIV version, the mind governed by the flesh is death. It says in the Passion Translation, for the sense and reason of the flesh is death. We have to conclude that flesh is synonymous with death. We, there's no way to get around it. That, 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 that Those two are connected together. When you're saying someone's in their flesh, you're saying someone is in their death. When you're saying someone's operating in the flesh, you're saying someone is dead. Flesh and death are obviously synonymous. Everybody following what I'm saying? So now... How do I know if I'm in the flesh? Because it's so hard to discern. Because some people praise God and don't feel nothing. People praise God and don't nothing come. Don't nothing hear. They pray and don't hear nothing. Amen. You know what you do when, when that happens? You obey God anyway. Flesh says, when I see them praise, God, you pour all over them. But when I praise, don't nothing happen. So I'm just going to stop praising because something's wrong with me. No, this is a time for you to get out the hammer and the nails to mortify your flesh. And you didn't figure it out. So you stop praising because you didn't realize before they got into that praise where the power falls every time. They looked around and said, God, why you ain't touching me like that? But they kept praising anyway. See, how you mortify your flesh is now when you recognize that although I'm not experiencing what God said, I'm going to do it until I see it. It's, that's how I mortify my flesh. I'm going to read the word until I don't 
understand it, so that's why I don't read the word. No, read it without understanding until enough of your flesh is dead to be able to understand what you read. I couldn't understand it before either. I didn't feel nothing when I prayed either. But I got off the hammer and the nails. And when I didn't feel like praying, I prayed anyway. When I didn't feel like praising, I praise anyway. You want to mortify your flesh? How you get through, and that's how you begin to gain spiritual growth. I don't feel it. Sensual. I just didn't feel God. Now wonder. Amen. To be carnally minded is death. Being in the flesh is being under a death sentence. Amen. People in the flesh just can't live. They just can't live, man. They can't live in peace. They can't live in joy. They can't live in content. They just can't live. Something's always wrong. How they said it always rubbed them the wrong way. Something is always bothering them. Something they don't like. Something that rubbed them the wrong way. Something that they're fighting through. Something that they're going through. Something that nobody understands but me. Why is that always happening? Amen. Flesh won't let us just live. I don't know about you, but I want to live. I want to laugh. I want to smile. I want to be energetic. I want to be positive. I want to be hopeful. I want to believe all things, hope all things. I want to bless God with all of who I am. I just want to live. I want to see good success. I want to prosper. I want to see Satan crushed under my feet. I want to live in the joy of the Lord. I just want to live. I ain't got time to be talking about who said something the way I didn't like it. Do people say stuff to me like that, like you? Yeah. But they said it to somebody in the spirit instead of somebody in the flesh. So what made you mad caused them to pray for the individual that said it the way that they said it. Because you really ain't mad at me. It's an oppression inside of you. Glory be to God. See, the reason why we're not casting out more devils is because we're fighting devil with devil. Come on, you know how they say fight fire with fire. We fight demon with demon. You gonna get nasty with me? I'm gonna get back nasty with you. That's just friendly fire. That's why ain't nobody getting free. Cause both of y'all fighting each other in your flesh. You don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. You act like I ain't there, I act like you ain't. Friendly fire. We actually on the same team. Flesh complains about everything, but don't have power to change nothing. Flesh talks about people, but don't pray till they get delivered. Flesh points out people's faults, but can't even see their strengths. Why are you the one that finds everything wrong with everybody? What if we just took three months like you and calculated every check mark wrong that we saw for you? And then tried to call that ministry. That's flesh. That's flesh. Amen? Watch this. Just like the wages of sin is death, so the walking, the result of walking in the flesh is death too. See, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin deals with eternal death. The results of the flesh deals with being dead while we're still living. All the movies about the walking dead aren't all. All the enemy is doing is reflecting about, about how many believers he has walking dead. They don't bring life to nothing. Amen? It's a walking dead. Just walking around like, uh, like zombies, ready to eat somebody. Biting and devouring one another. Cannibalism. Feeding off of each other's faults. And actually enjoying what you heard them say and then saying, but I'm concerned and I'm praying. You enjoyed hearing it. There was a part of you that said, mm, 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 got him. 
devouring one another. You know why that hits in some people's hearts and other people that don't? Because some of you are actually in the spirit. But those that are not, it, it, it turns you to cannibalism. Glory be to God. Can't wait to tell something. Did you know? Did you hear about where they saw? You know he wasn't with his wife. And then try to make it spiritual. See, God going to get him for that. Well, he going to get you because you're enjoying talking about it. You're, you're operating in cannibalism. Devouring one another. Those who are apostolic understand we don't eat one another like that. That was Paul's problem. He said, y'all, tearing one another up. <sighs> Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm not going to bite you. I'm going to bless you. Come on, I dare so. I'm not, come on, that about Shandiata. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them I'm not going to bite. Look, I'll, I'll look at, I'm not going to bite you. I'm going to bless you. I'm looking at some of these husbands and wives. I think they said they're going to do both. Y'all better cut it out. I'm going to bite you and bless you. No. Look, look. That ain't for right now. Okay. I picked it up in the spirit. Some of y'all changed the word. I don't know about pastor, but I'm going to bite you and bless you. I heard it. I heard it in the spirit. Y'all jokers, boy. That's why we got so many chilling around here. Uh, my God. <laughs> All right, watch this. Help the saints. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I want to share this because I really want to teach about coming out of the flesh, breaking the flesh off of it, because we're going into 2022, and we're going into 22 fleshless. <laughs> and before I can get to what all the blessings and benefits is in Ezekiel 1, because I want to show you the blessings and benefits laid out prophetically in Ezekiel 1. We have to deal with the flesh so we can make sure we go in fleshless. Amen. So there'll be no restraint, no restriction to what God wants to release and where he wants to take us. Amen. And then we won't have to spend 2022 fighting with the same demons that we fought with in 2021, thinking it's because they're so powerful instead of it's because how many ways our thoughts agree with theirs. They only gain access when our thoughts agree with theirs. It's through the flesh. I'm going to show it to you. Paul even said it in the scripture. That's how sin occupies, through the flesh. Amen? But, but let me show you this. Flesh and death are synonymous. When you say flesh, you're saying death. Uh, glory be to God. Both of them, they go together. I read three versions of scriptures to help you understand that. What, death, what does death and flesh look like? This is what I want to help you understand so, you un so you'll know that I'm not just making this stuff up that I'm sharing with you. It was like that from the beginning. We have to examine the first death. Who was the first man that died? Adam. Adam was the first death. So if we want to understand the nature of death and flesh, then we have to go back to the first death. And I'll help you understand and see this thing prophetically. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, I want to go to verse 16 and 17, and I, I want to go in the New King James Version. Hallelujah. I just felt a joy in my spirit. Hallelujah. God is good, man. If you don't just have those times where you get interrupted joy, just a smile jump for no reason, man, now you got to get in the spirit, man. It just, sometimes you just smile and folks be like, why are you smiling at? I don't know. I want to smile. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Verse 17. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day 
that you eat of it, you shall surely do what? So how Adam died helps us to understand what being in the flesh and the nature of the death of the flesh and what it looks like. What happened when Adam died? It did not look like death as we see it today, as we already understand. He was not placed in a casket. He was not buried. They did not do a funeral. But something did happen. Death did come upon him. Death did overtake him at that moment. But it's just not death as we know it. It's death of flesh. It's, it's now being sentenced to knowing God, but only being able to follow him in your flesh. He's now, he now, when he falls, becomes a flesh follower of Jesus Christ. It's now what it looks like when we try to walk with God in our flesh. Now watch this. Genesis 3 and 7. Then the eyes of them both were open. Did y'all just see that? Then the eyes of them, and we're talking about death. Then the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the eyes of them both were open. Death is first and foremost a lens. Oh, I'm trying to help y'all understand. Remember, we talked about it, a fleshly mind sees like demons see. When death hit them, the first thing it did was alter their eyes. And their eyes were opened. They died. So what does death do? It changes how we see. My God. Death is a way of seeing. Death causes us to see life like the demonic sees life. And so when Adam sees God, he sees God like a demon. And so he runs. I know I hear God, but I'm, I know I'm running because you're looking at him like demons do. And when they hear his name, they tremble. Death is when even when we're looking at God and we see something wrong. I know I can't be an apostle that runs up to your standard. You got problems with God. Adam thought God had faults. I was naked. Well, who left you naked, Adam? God. Well, obviously, God don't know what he's doing. Anybody ever looked at God and said, God, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Now, I done did everything I was supposed to do. I've been... Well, I wonder if I'm here by myself. I've been coming to church. I've been giving. Y'all sit there acting quiet like y'all ain't never did that because we don't want to recognize how easy it is to shift into the flesh and to begin to look at God like demons look at God and begin to fault find with God. God, what's wrong? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to pray? Why am I still here? Why do I got to deal with all these people? Why do I have to fight through this? Why do I have to face that? And we're seeing it like demons. And so we're stressed, frustrated, angry, wondering, did I make a wrong move? Wondering what is going wrong? Because that's how demons feel about God. And now we, 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 we literally begin to question God in every way, in every shape, and in every form. And then question everybody around us. Well, God, should I even be in this marriage? Should I even be connected to this? Should I? be doing this because you wouldn't leave me like this but sons look at it different if I'm fighting this I need it the Bible says you suffer if need be 
if I'm suffering, I need it. I need it for you to make me who you need to make me. I need it for you to change me like you need to change me. I need it for you to deal with my heart and my spirit. How dare I question God? I didn't already read about Job. I'm not going to be foolish enough to spend 30 chapters talking about God and questioning his work. I recognize if the devil's here, devil's on the other side. I've already read the book of Job. So I'm going to stand on all things work together for the good of them that love God. The call to court. What's wrong, God? And God is saying nothing. Just what's necessary. I need somebody to shout what's happening is necessary. I'm going to come out of this wiser. I'm going to come out of this stronger. I'm going to come out of this with patience. I'm going to come out of this with more of your spirit. I'm going to come out of this knowing how to stand. Amen. So death and flesh cause us to see problems, see life, see obstacles, see faith, see God, and see ourselves like the demonic sees our pro sees problems, sees life, sees obstacles, sees faith, and sees God. So I see my problems like demons see problems. So that's why every time I have a problem, I feel like giving up. Why? Because demons have no hope. And so I feel like demons when I see problems because if I see it like them, who has control over how I see, has control over how I see myself. It was a lens. Death is a lens. You just look at a fight and there's a part of you that just looks like you're going to lose. I'm just going to lose. I can't take all this. God, you ought to change something. I can't bear up under all this. I can't handle all this. This is too much for me. Amen. I look at sin like demons look at sin. Man, everybody going to sin. Sometimes it's too hard not to sin. Well, who sees sin like that? Those who are dead. Their eyes were open. Whew. Their eyesight changed. Only in the spirit can we see it like God sees it. Whew. That's why those in the spirit are immovable. Man, you find somebody in the spirit, when stuff starts shaking, grab them. Because they ain't going to move. Glory be to God. Somebody in the spirit sees it like God sees it. Come on. We got to see the devil like God sees the devil. You know how God sees the devil? And I saw Satan fall as lightning out of the sky. He's about to take a fall if he comes up here. Because I see the enemy like God sees the enemy. You know how God sees problems? You know how he sees it? In this world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have over. I'm about to overcome come this. I'm about to get past this. I'm about to get through this. This is just how I see it. I can't help it because in the spirit apostolic people are not easily moved because they're spiritual. They don't use what they see in the spirit to be scared. They don't use what they see in the spirit to, to, to make everybody nervous. But I see the devil coming. You better watch out. You just prophesied in your flesh. Because God has not given us the spirit of. You should. But you're trying to say it in a way to make us scared. No, we say it like God said it to Peter. 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 Or can I change it? Simon. Simon. Satan wishes to sift you as wheat. He coming. And he going to get you. He going to mess you up. He going to make you fall. He going to make you change. He going to make you. No, he didn't see it like that. He said, Simon. Simon. Satan wished to sift you as wheat. But guess what? I prayed for you. 
and when he finishes my prayer did the job so come back and strengthen your brother before he ever comes I already know by the end of the day he got to go I need some folk that see it like God sees it I know Satan is coming but the same way he came he gonna have to leave though the enemy comes against me one way he shall flee before me seven ways let God be the coach Why am I talking about worrying when I already prayed for it? My God, I need somebody to shout, I already prayed for it. I know the devil's coming, but I already prayed for it. I know attack is coming, but I already prayed for it. I know sickness is going to try to hit the house, but I already prayed for it. And when you come out, when you break through, when it can't hold you no more, come back and strengthen your brothers. Prayer isn't to stop Satan. Prayer is to demean the impact of Satan's attack. We got to stop Satan from coming. No, he don't. No, we don't. Come on. Come on. What you want to do? What? What? Come on. Talk your talk. Come on. See, we don't understand how much the Holy Spirit is a bully spirit. The Holy Spirit don't like to wait for the enemy to attack. The Holy Spirit likes to sniff the enemy out. And the heavens were open at the Jordan River. And the Spirit of God descended on Jesus like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven that came down and said, This is my beloved son. <laughs> In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye here. And immediately following this, after he was full of the glory of God, because glory is violent, glory wants to fight something, he was driven, oh, glory, into the wilderness to be attacked by the devil. The devil won't attack me in the Jordan, but I got a violent spirit in me. I'm going to put myself in the line of fire and say, devil, bring it on because I got a hook. I'm filled with a spirit for the kingdom suffereth violent and the violent take it by force. I need some folk who ain't trying to run but shut down the gates of hell an apostolic church uh, is a fighting church. Uh, an apostolic church uh, is a violent church. You just to tell your neighbor, I'm about to get my Debo back. <laughs> Give me your bike, pump. I didn't watch that after I was saved. That's how I say, oh no. My God. An apostle watch movies like that. Amen. Now watch this. I lost all my train of thought. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. So much. So little time. I probably ain't going to be able to cover this all. Man, I might have to sit here, perhaps do this. Do this another time. Can we just go into prayer? Come on, can we just play something, sisters? Hold that. 